policies. It's already clear that several key members of the president-elect's national security team advocate illegal policies. So this morning, my view is we need to find out what you're for. And I'm just going to tick through some of the issues we talked about in the office. Let's start with surveillance, if we could. You recently wrote a op-ed article saying that Congress ought to pass a new law reestablishing the collection of all metadata. Those are your words, all metadata. So you would basically get the Congress and the country back into the business of collecting millions and millions of phone records on law-abiding people. You go on in this op-ed article to say that these phone records ought to be combined with publicly available financial and lifestyle information into a comprehensive searchable database. So you would be in favor of a new law collecting all of this data about the personal lives of our people. And I think it would be helpful if you could start by saying, are there any boundaries in your view to something this sweeping? Senator, you and I did have a chance to discuss this. There are, of course, boundaries to this. Uh, first and foremost, they begin with legal boundaries that exist today. Uh, that uh, piece that I was referring to uh, was talking about US government, the U.S. government's obligation to do all that it can in a lawful constitutional manner to collect foreign intelligence uh, no, important no, to no. keeping America Con safe. Congressman, that's not what you, what you were talking Senator, about. You I, said I, collecting all metadata. Yes, Senator. All I'll, metadata. I'll, 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 let me, if I might, just continue. Yes, uh, I, I still continue to stand behind uh, the commitment to keep Americans safe and by conducting lawful intelligence collection. Uh, when I was referring to metadata there, I was talking about the metadata program uh, that um, the USA Freedom Act has now changed in fundamental ways. I, you should recall, voted for the USA Freedom Act, uh, and I understand its restrictions. Uh, its restrictions on efforts uh, by all of the U.S. government to collect information. But you, you wrote this op-ed since the passage of the law. So after the law passed, you said, let's get back into the business of collecting all of this metadata. And I'm curious what kind of information about finances and lifestyles would you not enter into your idea of this giant database? Well, Senator, first of all, I have to begin by saying today that would be, in, in most instances, what you referred to there would be unlawful under current law. And so as the director of the CIA, you have my assurance we will not engage in unlawful activity. Uh, but I think this committee, the American people, demand uh, that if there's publicly available information someone has out there on our public available site, I think we have an obligation to use that information to keep Americans safe. If someone's out there on their Facebook page talking about an attack or plotting an attack against America, I think, I think you would find the director of the CIA and the intelligence community uh, grossly negligent if they didn't pursue that information. Con Congressman, I don't take a backseat to anybody in terms of protecting this country when our security is on the line. I wrote the section of the Freedom Act that gives the government emergency authority to move when it's critical to protect the country. That's not what we're talking about here. You're talking about your interest in setting up a whole new metadata collection system, which is far more sweeping than anything the Congress has uh, been looking at. And if you would, before we vote, I would like you to furnish in writing what kind of limits you think there ought to be on something like this. Let me see if I can get in one more question. The president-elect had indicated on the Apple issue that, in effect, he thought that there shouldn't be strong encryption and that he basically would consider pushing for mandated backdoors into encrypted products. And that's been the position of the FBI, some very influential members of Congress. Now, you have not been a cheerleader, as far as I can tell, for weakening strong encryption, which is something I think 
that uh, sounds constructive. If you're confirmed as CIA director, are you willing to take the president, the FBI, and influential members of Congress on, on this issue? Because I think it's clear weakening strong encryption will leave us less safe. And I'd like to hear your views with respect to strong, strong encryption. And would you be willing to take the president, the FBI, influential members of Congress on when they advocate it because they're going to? Senator, first of all, I did not mean at all to suggest you were second to anyone with respect to keeping America safe. I, if I implied that, uh, I did not intend that. You should know I take a back seat to no one with respect to protecting Americans' privacy either. I think that is incredibly, incredibly important. Uh, with respect to encryption, it's a complicated issue. Um, I, I know enough about it uh, to begin to form judgments, uh, but uh, I want to talk to you about the process, the framework I'll use. It's, uh, I think this applies across a broad range of issues we'll discuss today. Uh, when we're dealing about an issue like encryption that has commercial implications, national security implications, privacy implications, um, I will do my best to understand what it means to the Central Intelligence Agency and what it means to our capacity to keep America safe. Uh, and I will represent its interests as my part of a larger effort to make sure that we get that policy decision right. And if, in fact, uh, it is the conclusions of folks out at the agency and our team, and I con con uh, concur in that assessment, uh, I can assure you I will present that rigorously, whatever the views of the president are or any of the members of his team. I will, I will, I will do my best to get that right and represent, um, do my role as the director of the CAF, I'm confirmed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.